You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. Putting the Five Step Bible to the Test, Ezekiel 28 11 following, Part 2. Okay, we didn't really look at all the stuff we should have done in Part 1, but this is Five Minute Bible. Now, let's look at the differences between us and them. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Most of the imagery in this, apart from the stuff about Eden, doesn't mean much to us. So we're a bit confused. That may seem a rather trite thing to say for step two, but it's actually really important. Because if we admit that we're confused, as we address this what's different step, then we won't be tempted to start looking too closely at all those details in the imagery and rabbiting on about the wonders of prophecy and miss the forest. Yeah, in part one I stressed, look at the forest before you look at the trees. The trees will come in in about stage three of your theology degree if you do one or your biblical studies degree if you can get one. So, what's different, the first thing that's different is that we don't understand half the imagery. Second thing that's different is that we aren't exiles, or most of us aren't, and we need to remember that the people who heard this were. But the Tyrians were too, or some of them were. Let's move on, because this passage isn't ideal for discussing step two to step three. What does this passage say about theology? Remembering that the Bible is God's book. It's about God. It says, quite clearly, that God is beyond and more powerful than all that stuff about the first man in Eden and all that stuff about rings on the mountain of the gods. There is one power in the universe and that that power cares about the economic activities of the Tyrian king and his cohorts. It says that God cares about the economy, and God cares about how we conduct our business affairs. Okay, we're getting through lots of steps this evening. Step five. What difference does it make that we read it A.D., not B.C.? The first thing I notice is that Jesus had some pretty tough things to say about uh, rich people, but he also had something to say about grace. Think of the story of Zacchaeus. There was someone who was rich, who had gained their riches unjustly, but who was redeemed by meeting Jesus. On the other hand, think of the story of the rich young ruler. There was someone who couldn't be redeemed because of their attachment to their riches. So, for this passage, step four doesn't produce any huge changes. It just underlines and confirms the message which runs through the Bible. God cares about economics, and God detests Injustice, oppression. Doesn't sound much like the gospel you hear in many churches, does it? If it doesn't, there's something wrong with those churches. Because if you were a poor villager in Africa, or what they euphemistically call a sex worker in Bangkok, or a refugee just about anywhere in the world, you'd be delighted with this message. It really would be good news. You see? We're already heading into step five. Step five is easy. But step five is for you to do in your situation, and me in mine. Then it's not so easy. But who said that the Bible would be easy? I said the five steps would be easy. Actually, I told a fib. Steps one to four are easy. Step five, the final step, is really hard, but it's the one that matters, because that's where you let God apply the Bible 
to your life. And likewise I let the divine power into mine. Amen.